Time for some hotel horror recommendations. Alright guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Zach with Zach's Books and welcome back to Zocktober. If you hear the dishwasher going in the background, apologies. Uh, so basically what I am going to be doing for Zocktober, besides doing a video a day, um, this is going to be uh, specific trope recommendations. Uh, a lot of you guys asked for specific tropes uh, that you would like some recommendations on. And so I'm going to be doing a couple of videos like that this October, it's October. And the first one I'm going to be doing is Hotel Horror Recommendations. I think it's going to be the first. I don't know where we're going to place it, but it's going to happen. So how this is going to go in terms of like the tropes themselves is I'm going to talk about a couple that I have read four or five six of them and then I'm gonna mention a couple that I haven't read but fit the trope that to my understanding are recommended books from other people um, just something I feel like doing so uh, don't forget to like comment and subscribe and let's get into the hotel horror books first up is security by Gina Wolsdorf and I know a lot of you are probably wondering why I'm putting this on this list because I did not like this book I am going to say the back of the book describes it well. Grand Hotel meets Psycho. It's a hotel. It's like this very bougie luxury type hotel and we're following a group of people who work there. And I want to say the opening day or like the big day is like the next day. So people have to stay overnight to try and like get things ready. The chefs, the cleaners, like everything. And simultaneously, we're following the perspective of a killer who's going around and murdering the staff. I think I end up giving this like three stars. There were some issues that I found that didn't suit me, but could work for other people, which is why it's in this video. I mean, the writing style was not the best, in my opinion. I felt like sh the author had kind of jammed, packed too many like perspectives into like one like brief writing stint. Um, I guess it just didn't work for the audiobook. Maybe if you're physically reading it, it might work a little bit better. Um, then there was a scene in here that I felt was unnecessary. But the story itself I enjoyed. I thought it was a solid story. Um, there were just little bits and pieces for me that just didn't click. So, But they might click for you, which is why it's in this video. So... Uh, yeah, there you have Security by Gina Wolstorf. All right, speaking of The Grand Hotel, The Grand Hotel by Scott Kenmore. So this book, I gave four stars. I thought it was pretty entertaining. So this is about a The Grand Hotel, a group of people enter it. You're fought like the guy, I don't know, what, he's not called the bellboy. I think he's the manager, I think is what they call him the owner, whatever, um, takes, oh, the desk clerk. And he pretty much, he takes everybody on a tour of the hotel, taking people room to room, and then people in those rooms tell everybody a story about their past. And it's really entertaining. The twist, I thought, was really good. I really just enjoyed this book. It was pretty solid. Um... I didn't really have a whole lot of beef with it. I mean, the cover looks really cool. It's just a really solid, it was a good story. I just, I don't know, it didn't like wow me to give, to make me put it as a five star, but it was a really solid book. So, um, Bano, you're following all these different stories from all these different people who are in the Grand Hotel, and I absolutely just adored the story, and the plot, like I said, was just great and the plot twist was even better so there you have the grand hotel by scott kenmore and speaking of the grand hotel meets psycho here's psycho by robert block so this book a this cover looks really cool this book is a classic everybody knows the story of psycho at least i hope you do but if you don't let me enlighten you so basically <clears throat> this hotel is, or it's a motel, it's Bates Motel. And basically what happened, I guess, yeah, we'll, we'll count this as hotel, whatever, leave me alone. 
Um, but basically what this is about is a gentleman by the name of Norman, Norman Bates is the, I guess now he is the owner of, well, you know, yeah, him and his mom are the owners of this motel and they take in people, obviously because it's a hotel, motel, whatever. So basically what we are following, we follow the perspective of a few different people. We follow the perspective of Norman, we follow the perspective of a woman who stays at the motel, and then another woman who's at the motel, then like a detective. There's all these perspectives and I absolutely love this book. I gave it five stars. It was a really solid read and it truly is a classic. Again, if you've seen the movie, pretty spot on. So I would definitely recommend this if you have not read this. It is a very, very good book. Um, it's another one I might actually reread this year. Who knows? It's a really solid story. So, um, But, you know, I really enjoyed it. I gave it five stars, like I said. And I, this one was brief. It's basically just like how the movie is. So they have Psycho, Robert Block. All right, next up is The Return by Rachel Harrison. So Danielle read this first. She gave it five stars. And then she wanted me to read it, and I gave it five stars. So this book is really solid. You're following the perspective of a woman who is at a... The reason why this is a hotel horror type thing is a group of friends go to a hotel with their friend who has been missing for a long time, and she comes back. And... Just like the thing says, it's not really her friend who, like, came back. It doesn't feel like it. Her friend disappeared, a stranger came back. But the other friends are kind of, like, subliminal, I think is the word I want to say. They're, like, they don't see any differences. And so they're calling her crazy, saying that there's nothing wrong with her, she's fine, you know, you're just being weird. I think at some point they say like, oh, you're the friend who always wanted attention or something like that, so like, stop. I definitely would recommend this. It's, and so would Danielle. The cover looks really cool. And it's just really good. I, I, the plot twist at the end was really solid and just the story itself was good. So yeah, very good book. There you have The Return by Rachel Harrison. Alright, before I get into the next book, as I said, I'm going to try and wear a shirt every day differently. I mean, I'm going to wear a shirt every day. I'm going to wear a different shirt every day. I can't talk. And in sue of this being about hotels, I figured I'd wear this shirt. I don't know if you can read it, but it's the Overlook Hotel shirt that I got for my birthday and or Christmas last year. And the reason why I bring that up is because The Shining. This would not be hotel horror if I did not talk about The Shining. No duh. So, I like talk about this book like every five minutes, I swear to goodness. Um, basically, you're following the Torrance family. If you don't know what this is and you've been on my channel for a long time, A, who are you? And B, get off. Um, but no, stay. Um, C, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, basically, if you don't know what this is about, this is about the Torrance family who... Jack, the father, is the winter caretaker for the Overlook Hotel. And... Who pits the fan? It's not a good time for almost any of them. Jack is a recovering alcoholic and gets the job despite the owner kind of giving him like some crap for being a recovering alcoholic. And Danny has got special abilities that is called the Shining um, or the Shine. And basically what he can see is he can see... I mean, like, dead people. He can communicate with dead people, and he can, like, see stuff like that. Um, he also has this cool ability where he can talk to Dick, which is the uh, chef of the Overlook Hotel. And he can, like, communicate with him without, like, actually speaking, which is really cool and helpful at the end of the book. So, um, if you know, you know. Uh, but, ultimately, does not go well for the Torrance family. Um... It's just not fun because Jack ends up going completely insane. And yeah, Cabin Fever. Really cool story. I absolutely love this book. All-time favorite Stephen King book. If you have not read this book, read this book. So, They Have the Shining by Stephen King. All right, so the last three I'm going to discuss are going to be ones that I have not read. 
um, but would definitely fit the trope. Danielle, I actually read the uh, last one we're going to discuss, so I'll save that one for last. But here's the first one. Deadfall Hotel by Steve Race Rasnick Tem. I believe that's how I pronounce that. Uh, sorry if I mispronounced that. Um, again, I have not read this, so I'm going to do my best here. Um, as far as I know, I mean, the blurb in the back says, This is the hotel where our nightmare... And that says, Thames Deadfall Hotel makes the Shinings Overlook Hotel look like butlins. Eerie, disturbing, and yet strangely touching. You'll check in, but may never check out. So it sounds really intriguing, but again, it's a book I have not read. So, yeah. Then we'll get into the next one here, which is Womb by Duncan Ralston. This is an extreme horror novel, um, and it's kind of like a short story, novella type thing. Um, this is another one, obviously, that I've not read, because no duh. No, I'm just going to stop saying that. Um, obviously, you could see a like, motel, hotel type thing in the front. Um, it's an extreme horror. I think Danielle's heard more about this than I have, and she, by what she has recalled, she said that it is like... Like, really extreme. Yeah, it's extreme and, like, pretty graphic, so. Um, but yeah, there you have Womb by Duncan Ralston. And then here's the last one, which is one Danielle has read, and that is The Rotting Within by Matt Kurtz. So I'm going to, uh, let Danielle do a little talking here to try and describe this book. I gave this five stars, and it's set at a bed and breakfast inn. So not exactly a hotel, but you get those vibes because it's at a bed and breakfast inn. Creepy things live within the walls, and it was really good. Yeah, I mean, there you have it. I mean, that cover just looks absolutely graphic. So, uh, yeah, there you have The Rotting Within by Matt Kurtz. So, there you have the three books that... We have not read, or well, I have not read, but would recommend because they fall into the trope. Um, and there you have my hotel horror trope recommendations. We will have these linked down below if you want to check any of them out. We also got all the other stuff down below. Podcast, Instagram, Danielle's channel, all that other fun stuff. Um, let me know some of your recommendations down below for hotel horror. Uh, if you have read any of these other three that I have not, let me know your thoughts down below. Uh, also, let me know your thoughts on the five that I did read. Maybe we have some disagreements. Um, but yeah, otherwise, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in tomorrow's episode of Zocktober. Later. Mm -hmm.